If you're just logging on, hello and welcome. Good afternoon. If you're in Durham, hello to our students in all sorts of time zones. We are going to wait just another minute while people keep logging in before we kick off the session. So stay tuned. All right, we'll go ahead and start to be good on time. Hello, everyone. My name is Grace Sullivan Zirkel. I serve as an associate director in the Office of New Student and Family Programs. And it's my honor and privilege to be one of the staff members that supports all of you new to Duke students in your onboarding, both over the summer and um, in August and, and through the beginning of the, the school year. So thank you so much for being here today. Um, for this required session. And hello to all of you who are watching this back in a recording um, over the next few days. Um, I'm really honored to have staff here today from both Housing and Residence Life, as well as the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards, so they can share more about housing policies, um, the Duke Community Standard, and what it means to build strong community in the residence halls and in your time at Duke. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to my colleagues. Maybe we're having some technical difficulties. We'll see if I can fix that. We should be good to go. Okay, thank you, Grace. Sorry, yeah, just having a little bit of trouble on muting. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Colin McLaughlin. I use he, him, his pronouns. Um, I work in the Office of Housing and Residence Life here at Duke. Um, I serve as a residence coordinator on our East Campus, or so first year campus, um, for uh, Bell Tower and Trinity Quad. So that's the Bell Tower Residence Hall and Trinity Residence Hall. And I'll pass it over to my colleague, Aaron, for an introduction. Thank you, Colin. Greetings, everyone. My name is Aaron Lash Jr. I use he, him, his pronouns. I am the Senior Program Coordinator for the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Even though this is required, we're going to have a good time. Colin's going to tell you about housing residence life and I'm going to give you a little, um, give you all some feedback regarding the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. Take it away, Colin. Thanks, Aaron. <clears throat> um, so a little bit about HRL or Housing and Residence Life. We're consisted of housing assignments. So the office that assigns you your actually living space each year. Um, the, our East Campus HRL office. So our first year campus and then our West Campus HRL office. Um, that's all our upper class students. So sophomores to seniors. And then finally, our facilities team. Um, so our housekeepers. Um, our maintenance managers, uh, people like that. So some items to consider bringing, don't worry about writing all this down. You will be getting an email regarding this from your campus dean, but these are just some suggested items to consider bringing um, upon your arrival here in Durham in just, I believe, 12 short days. So, um, you know, desk lamp, headphones, tissues, your, med your prescription medicines, if you have any, Things like that, just a basic packing list. Um, some items leave at home, larger furniture, larger area rugs, sentimental valued items, um, larger flat screen TVs, um, things along those lines. Um, you could consider renting a micro fridge, which is a combination of a microwave and refrigerator uh, from Duke. Um, but these are just some items to think about leaving at home. And then finally, some prohibited items. Um, you can read these for yourself, but on East Campus, um, alcohol would be not, pro not um, permitted given that we're a dry campus on East. 
um, pets unless you know approved through our SDAO office, um, personally owned air conditioning and heating equipment, and things along those lines. Again, um, don't fret if you haven't you know written every single thing down. You will be getting an email regarding this list, um, so you can go over it for yourself um, upon leaving for Durham. So some key residence life staff members. First, um, a resident assistant, or commonly referred to as the RA. Um, an upper class student, so a sophomore through senior, sometimes a graduate student, a good listener, friend, helper, a resource to you for anything inside or outside the classroom can kind of guide you, you know, to the right resource or connection point that you might need here on campus. Um, well, could help you get into your room if you're locked out. Don't worry, that's a common thing that happens, especially here on our first year campus. It's kind of a habit to get into to carry around a key all the time or make sure you always have your phone with you when scanning into your room so if you ever locked out we have someone that can get you back in and they're always on call from 9 p.m to 8 a.m every single day so though that time period seven days a week you'll have an ra on call to be able to call in your specific building or area our next is our assistant residence hall coordinator so there are graduate level staff in the residence halls Another resource to kind of help you get connected to different resources here on campus, whether that's academic, social, personal, you know, whatever it may be, they're there to help you serve in that. On our East Campus, they advise our House Council, which is a group of students elected by their community to serve and put on social programming. I'll talk about that a little in a little bit. Um, also here, you know, a main, a main resource for those lockouts from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and then they also serve in an on-call system as well. You can see uh, for the weekdays, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and on the weekends, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Our graduate residents, very similar to our um, ARCs or assistant residence hall coordinators. Uh, again, graduate level staff, another resource for you to help get connected to different things in the Duke community. Also serve during the same on-call time period and they also serve as an advisor to our house councils here on East Campus, and as well um, in assisting with our quad councils on our West Campus for you, um, for those of you who are transfer students joining us this afternoon. And finally, our residence coordinators. Um, so someone like myself, well, full-time professional with a master's degree in counseling or education or something very similar along those lines, um, we're, we are, full-time living in the halls with you, um, supervising the RAs, the GRs, the ARCs, um, help, here to help build community within your area. Um, so for example, Trinity and Bell Tower, that's my area, and responding to crisis situations, we have someone as an RC serving on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we always have someone here from you know the RA to the RC and different on-call periods. Also a good listener and also a good resource to get you to different um, pieces throughout the community here at Duke um, and give you some good information uh, that you might need when navigating um, in your first year, or even your first semester here at Duke, whether that's on East or West Campus. Our faculty and residents, um, this is a full-time faculty member who lives in the halls, often with their families. So this is uh, Dr. John Blackshear and his wife, Kimberly Blackshear, who both um, work here at the university and their four children, they live in uh, Trinity on East Campus. Um, and they're very involved in the community. Their children love, you know, to, to be around the college students. Um, they're a very fun group, you know, to have here on campus with us. We're very fortunate. Um, they come from a variety of different uh, fields and disciplines. Um, so all different types of professors. Um, another resource for you to support, uh, especially on our first year campus for academic questions and advice that you might have and also help provide some intellectual engagement for the residential community. So they will often be putting on programs in your residence halls, in your community, um, you know, week to week, month to month, you know, whatever it may be, they're there to, to help program as well, kind of more on the academic side of things. For our West Campus folks, our transfer students who are joining us, we have our academic guides, which is Similar to our faculty and residents, they have offices located within the residential quads on West Campus, excuse me. Um, they don't live within the halls, but they do have offices within the halls. They also come from a variety of different disciplines and fields. And again, another resource to help support you academically um, and get advice from, you know, when scheduling or things like that, things you might have need 
help with in the academic realm of things. Um, they also help provide um, intellectual engagement through programming, um, especially with the quad councils on our West Campus. And I actually have a QR code there. So if you have your phone with you and you want to scan, that will take you directly to our academic guide website that can kind of show you um, our transfer students what academic guide will be in your assigned quad. Um, if you know you're interested in scheduling a meeting with them just you know to introduce yourself or maybe you already have some questions that you might need answered that's where you can find that and there are some spots that they're still filling right now but um don't worry we will eventually have uh, academic guides in every quad for you at the start of the semester so next uh quad x um quad x is our new inclusive living and learning model here at duke so uh the two um pictures i have posted here the first one that's pretty colorful is are the East Campus houses. So where you're living here now is a first year and where you'll be connected to directly next year um, on West Campus for the quad that you'll be living in. So you probably got an email with some kind of information regarding that. But if you need to look at it again, it's right here. And again, I also have a QR code that will take you directly to the Quad X website. If you want to look a little bit more about, read a little bit more, excuse me, about Quad X and you know what exactly it is, where it came from, you know what the history has been and, and such. Uh, this automatically gives you as a first year student a sense of belonging to your West Campus Connecting Quad. So for example, if you're a Bell Tower or Trinity resident this year, you're automatically connected to Edens next year. So that's where you'll be living. That's where you'll have a community on West. If you, you'll be doing different programs with them, we have different initiatives coming out that you'll be able to participate with your fellow West Campus Connecting Quad and things like that. And we'll help you build residential community between your the East and West Campus link, and also support special programming to give you a sense of belonging, whether you're living on East Campus or West Campus. And this goes the same for our West Campus new folks as well. Um, feeling like you want a little bit of that connection back to East or with some first year students, um, you know, the same thing works. It works both ways. So the other, um, infographic that I have here is a journey map. So this kind of gives you the, you know, play by play of the year of what it looks like to take part in Quad X, um, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, um, each color represents a different class here. And again, you can find this all through the QR code that I have here, or also just by going to the Duke website and um, going to the Quad X tab to read more about it. Both of these images are there as well. So getting involved in your community. Like I mentioned earlier, house and quad councils. On East Campus, it's house council. On West Campus, it's quad council. Um, again, a group of students you're elected into to plan social programs for your community, um, bring different things to your community. Maybe your community is interested in um, getting some new furniture for their common room or things like that. Those are some other things you can look into working with your advisor, whether that's your GR, your RC in your community. Uh, to bring to bring things that your community needs or might want to see uh, for the future. Uh, but one of their main priorities is to socially program for you in the community next to the RAs as well. Applying for the RA position. So as a first year student, unfortunately, you can't apply to be a, an RA right when you're coming into Duke, but you're able to be an RA starting your sophomore year. So at the middle to end of the fall, you'll start to hear a little bit more about the RA position and applying for the fall semester of 2023. Um, attending some of the building and campus wide programs and events, so things like movie nights that your RAs or quad and house councils will be putting on, video game tournaments, cheer wine and design, and so much more. Uh, Duke has so many different programs going on, not just within our communities, um, different houses and quads, but also just generally across campus. And if you have um, some ideas for fun programs in your community. Don't be afraid to talk to your RA or your house council or quad council about, you know, some things that you might want to see. So staying safe on campus, DUPD officers are fully commissioned by the state of North Carolina to have full arrest power. We have a satellite police station in the lower level of Bell Tower Residence Hall on East Campus. Uh, we have blue light phones throughout campus, so quite literally the blue light um, with the like yellowish neon pool. Um, one thing to remember, not to prop open doors. All of our doors are by scanner access, so no one can just walk into the building. So keep that in mind. And then also DUPD, um, our on-campus number. 
919-684-2444, excuse me, and then the 911 will go directly to the Durham Police, which DUPD does work with directly. So um, those are those two numbers as well. And those are things your RA are gonna be giving out to you as well upon you know, your first floor meeting. So don't worry if you're not like getting all this information down right now, it will also be passed along later as well. Some more information, always make sure you're locking your door. Not every door locks right behind you. So make sure that you're locking it and keeping it locked when you're leaving. Um, walking around campus with others, with a buddy, making use of our safety system. So taking the bus between East and West, um, downloading the Live Safe app, which is really resourceful, very useful. Um, if someone is sick or injured, a friend, someone on your floor, someone you're walking by, contacting your RA, um, if you're in your community or in, in your building or contacting DUPD and EMS. And then always evacuate when you hear the fire alarm go off, um, regardless of if you know it's a drill or not, um, make sure that you're always you know, exiting your residential hall when you hear those things. Duke Alert, so the outdoor audible systems, tornado warnings, campus emergencies, um, sometimes you may be hearing those go, going off. Campus-wide emails, text for storm warnings and other campus emergencies, and making sure that you're signing up for Duke Alerts to make sure they're receiving these timely warnings in case of a campus emergency. Some reminders to leave you with. Um, if you're locked out uh, during business hours, so 8.30 to 5, you can go to the East HRL office if you're a first-year student living on East Campus in Southgate Residence Hall. Or if you're living on West and a transfer student, um, going to the office in Craven Quad. Um, again, in those between 8.30 and five. Again, we have a GR on call if you're locked out after the fact of the office closing and then our RA on call. If you lose your key, it's $125 to replace it. So keep that in mind when you're you know, walking around with your key and you know, being responsible for all of those different things upon arriving to Duke. Some other reminders, all of your trash and recyclables do go to the trash room. So every building, every residential hall has a trash room. So make sure you're taking out your trash to your uh, specific trash room. If there's ever a fire, flood or power outage, you're calling DUPD, emergency services. Our housekeeping cleans the public area. So the kitchen, common rooms, bathrooms and hallways, but not bedrooms. So please make sure that you're taking care of your personal space as well. Um, cleaning up after yourself and respecting not you just your space, but also your roommate's space. If you have a roommate, maintenance requests. So if you have a light burnout, broken furniture, you see a clogged sink in the bathroom, you know things along those lines. Submitting a, a work order request by the online form or calling the office during office hours. Um, again, you'll get the that all that information, those specific things from your RAs upon your first floor meetings and things like that. And then we live in a community, so remember that you're not just living, you know, in your own space or sharing the space with a bunch of other people. This is your home away from home. So make sure you're respecting it, not just for yourself, but, you know, for everyone else that's living in the community with you. And finally, just some of our uh, housing and residence life policies. Alcohol students who are under the age of 21 may not possess, consume, or be with others who are possessing or consuming alcohol underage. Um, again, East Campus is a dry campus, so there's no alcohol period permitted on East Campus. There are no weapons or firearms of any kind. Drugs, illegal drugs are, are not permitted on campus. This includes cannabis. Fire safety, candles or other open flames are not permitted. No tampering with the smoke detectors or fire extinguishers. You must exit the building if the fire alarm sounds. No smoking inside the building and tampering with the fire safety equipment will result in you losing your housing license. Um, guests, students can have a, a guest up to three consecutive nights, but please make sure all parties adhere to the roommate agreement form to be courteous. So you will be filling out a roommate agreement with your roommate. Um, so just make sure you're keeping those things in mind when inviting guests, communicating with your, your uh, roommate to make sure you know that you're both on the same page about having guests when and where and for how long. Quiet hours or 24 hours per day, and you should not be able to hear noise more than three doors down. You will vote on specific quiet hours based on your uh, quad community, um, but you shouldn't be able to hear noise more than three doors down. And again, like I mentioned earlier, the roommate agreement forms will be given to you and you should be 
completing that with your roommate in person within the first few weeks of the semester. And what happens if you violate a policy? Uh, the situation will be documented by the staff or other students, depending on the severity of the situation and your disciplinary history. So if you have any you know, violations in the past, the case may be resolved by your residence coordinator or be referred to the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. Um, so please make sure you're complying with the instructions of the RA, the GR, the ARCs, RCs, or any HRL staff um, when going through that process. Um, and the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards is where Aaron comes in. So I'm going to pass it off to him and he's going to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what their office does and kind of what their mission is and um, how they can help you as a student here at Duke. I think our, there's one more slide that's just featuring the blue devil in between our, yeah, so there's the blue devil in front of our student affairs logo. Perfect. Um, so pass it off to you, Aaron. Thank you so much, Colin. Um, already, y'all, we're going to have a, a little game. Um, I want to be as interactive as I can, even though I can't see your faces. If you all don't mind by scanning the QR code, um, there's a question that I want you all to answer. Um, and I'm going to unshare my screen and share my screen because I'm going to also copy the um, URL link in case you're unable to scan the code. Um, so please take some time to answer the question. Um, I kind of want to know when you think of student conduct, what are the first words that come in mind? That's the question. Um, it's going to be interactive. Um, it's anonymous, so feel free to be as honest as possible. Um, my, my, one of my favorite mantras is honesty is the best policy, so I'm going to unshare my screen real quick just to um, put in the chat the URL codes, but if you are able to scan the QR code and please answer these questions. Alrighty, so let me go. So I was able to send the link to the um, website and answering the question. So let me pivot to the website. All right, so what words come to mind when you hear um, the words Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards? And once you all submit, we can see uh, the words, uh, everyone will be able to see the words on the screen. Okay, 
So for some reason, it seems as though everyone has responded, um, but I'm unable to see the actual um, words. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to guess that some people may think when in terms of student conduct, they may be in trouble or we may be out to get you. And that's not our goal. Um, the, our goal within the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards is to strengthen personal responsibility and to hold everyone accountable, right? Like we want to make sure that everyone feels safe within um, their learning environment and or their residence hall environment. And we wanna hold you all accountable to those rules and making sure that everyone's doing their part in being a productive uh, Duke community member. So I'm going to go back to the presentation and share that so we can follow along. So give me one moment. Okay, so. Like I stated, um, there's a QR code, and if you scan this, this will show you all our um, if you if our entire website of the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. And if you scroll all the way down, you get to see my face and the face of my colleagues that work in the office. We're located in the second floor of Crow, which is on East Campus. It's directly behind those that live in Wilson uh, Residence Hall. It's our email provided and our phone number. Again, I mentioned um, Office of Student Conduct. We strengthen personal responsibility and accountability through investigations and resolutions of alleged violations of university policies. Any student that is named in any report of any possible violation is uh, presumed to be not in violation of such policy um, or yeah, university policy until you accept responsibility or us as the investigator conclude, you know, this is what happened. Um, I really wanna emphasize that because you're not guilty. Um, you're not. Uh, guilty until proven innocent, um, alleged violations. Um, if you find yourself, you or friend, find yourself in a situation where you're documented, does not mean your life is over. It doesn't mean um, you won't be successful. Um, RAs, GRs are all uh, mandated to write down what they see, what they hear. Um, and it's just, when you're in a situation that may be stressful, it's best to you know be cooperative, be kind, um, and when you meet with myself or an RC, we want to we want to hear things from your perspective. Um, we're going to read your redacted version of the incident report, and we want to work with you. Um, the Duke Community Standard. You're going to hear me say that um, on the website. Uh, if you scan the code, you'll see the Duke Community Standard. What is that? It's a body of beliefs combined with policies and procedures that express a standard of behavior um, that all Duke students agree to uphold, and in a commitment to enhancing our learning community. That'll show the policies that have been uh, that are in public, um, and it's also expected for you all to follow. So, why does the DCS um, even exist? So, it's a guide to help students within the Duke community in everyday endeavors, even when students inevitably have human moments and fall short of expectations. All of you are very su academically successful. You wouldn't be here. You all had to grind to get here, sacrifice, but you all are going to be. You all are humans. Um, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, you're going to fall short of, you know, your expectations. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. Um, those you idolize within your career field, a desired career field, they have fallen short in expectations. I'm a professional. All, every professional has fallen short. So when you do have that human moment, and if you find yourself in a situation where you violate policy or allegedly, um, give yourself grace. Um, this is that we have those policies and set to help you all, to help guide you all to make sure you're successful. And even if you fall short, um, your choices don't define you. To help, we also want to help enhance a climate for honesty, fairness, respect, and accountability. Honesty is the best policy. You find yourself in a situation where you did something, you didn't do something, you know, be honest. Um, we're going to be fair. Uh, we want you all to have respect for one another. Um, and we also want to accountability. You know, you can't change something that you refuse to acknowledge, and we want to help you um, all grow by just this power and self-reflection sometimes. And also, everyone makes poor 
choices and mistakes. And it's not an indictment of one's character to be found in violation of university policy. Things happen. Um, we all make mistakes and choices. Our goal is to make sure you learn from them and you all don't feel like you're defined by your mistakes, but you grow from your mistakes. Some of my most powerful conversations um, and relationships with students have derived from having a conduct meeting and just figuring out, hey, what happened? You know, like things happen. So really making sure you all understand the com uh, why we have these things to make sure you all are growing um, despite poor decisions, poor choices, because things do happen. So now, what happens to you if you violate um, the policy? So earlier when I had the QR code and it showed our um, website, um, there's a link that shows, hey, what's the process like? And it walks you through it, but this is just more of a simplistic version. So depending on the severity and situation of the incident, um, you will receive outreach from either your RC, assistant dean of students, or myself regarding the alleged incident. We're gonna attempt to schedule a meeting with you and discuss the alleged incident. Keyword alleged, I'm not saying what happened. We wanna you know, discuss, and once we meet with you all, then that's when we'll discover, hey, this incident occurred. So we really wanna emphasize the alleged piece, right? So during the meeting, university staff members will encourage you um, to inform us about what transpired during the alleged incident from your perspective. Um, the university staff member uh, will ask clarifying questions, um, and they're gonna give you feedback through an educational and restorative lens. We're huge, we don't want to get you all in trouble. We do not want to uh, not allow you all to have fun, but we have to hold you accountable. We're gonna ask you some questions regarding, hey, you know, if you're getting documented for repeatedly, you know, um, violating the noise policy, I'm gonna ask you, who's harmed by your choice that you make? Uh, not just your roommate, not just your hallmate, but what about your FIR that lives down below? You know, what about, um, your peers, you know, things of that nature. We're gonna ask questions, things of that nature. So after that meeting, you're gonna receive a decision letter via email that'll indicate findings of either responsible or not responsible. And in addition to this, you may receive an educational sanction. If you don't agree with the decision letter, you have the right to request a three to five person panel involving the student conduct board. The student conduct board is basically a group of students, faculty and staff that um, are tasked with hearing alleged violations of the university policy they're charged with determining whether a student or student group is responsible for a policy violation. And if so, the Student Conduct Board will determine the appropriate university response, including less or additional sanctions. Meaning, let's say I meet with someone uh, 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 that allegedly consumed alcohol under age, under the legal li uh, drinking age of 21, and I decide, hey, you know what? They're gonna receive a warning and they have to um, go speak with someone within do well. If someone feels like I didn't do this, uh, they would have every right to go to a student conduct board hearing and the student conduct board would hear that case and their decision, they can give you an additional sanction. Uh, they could trump what I gave and give a, a harsher um, violation. That's how that process would go. So the most prevalent policies within DCS is alcohol consumption, academic dishonesty, and sexual misconduct. Underage position slash consumption, we talked about this mainly, but students under 21 years of age are not permitted to purchase, possess, or consume any alcohol beverages, alcoholic beverages, I'm sorry. Being under the influence of any amount of alcohol while underage is considered a violation of this policy. Unsafe slash irresponsible behavior includes, and this is for those um, within the drinking uh, age and under it, consuming an excessive quantity in a short amount of time, including but not limited to shotgunning shots, uh, and chugging, participating in or facilitating drinking games or progressive parties, consuming the bill pongs, use of or attempted use of fraudulent identification or another's identification to uh, consume alcohol, making alcohol available to underage drinkers. Alcohol consumption guidelines. So the additional guidelines and restrictions regarding alcohol consumption at larger events and gatherings are currently being reviewed. Revised guidelines will be reissued by the University Center um, of Activities and Events soon. So the policy regarding this aspect will be revised and we will all know those things soon. So academic dishonesty, lying, cheating, plagiarism. Um, for more information with detailed description about academic dishonesty and all of the policies from the DCS guide, scan the QR code. So feel free, please scan this code and you can look at precisely, you'll see the A to Z policies, and you'll see what academic dishonesty entails. Lying, cheating, plagiarism, stealing, 
There's so many uh, more descriptions. I wanna give you all as much information as possible. Granted, I can't fit all that in the screen, but this will be a guideline upon what you all can see, not just within academic dishonesty, but all the other current policies as well. And if there are any revised uh, policies that will be added throughout the year and you all will receive uh, communication via email about those things as well. So I'm gonna give a minute just in case folks wanna scan. So what is a faculty student resolution? See, I love this, right? So for me, this office, uh, we pride ourselves on helping students. We really want you all to succeed. We all do not want you to be defined by um, previous mis choices or mistakes, bad judgment, things of that nature. So if you are caught um, being academically dishonest, allegedly, um, an, FS an FSR is a one-time optional resolution process for cases of academic dishonesty involving Duke undergraduate students. If there is no record of prior academic dishonesty offenses, the faculty member and the, your faculty member decides to pursue this resolution, then the student would be eligible to receive an FSR. So within an FSR, you may receive, it's basically a faculty student uh, resolution. Uh, your faculty member will reach out to you, tell you, hey, um, I reviewed this, you plagiarized. Um, they may decide you, have, you get a reduced grade on an assignment or a reduced grade in the course. They may give you an additional assignment or they'll give you another educational um, uh, sanction. The FSR must be agreed both by the faculty member and the student. The faculty member would report the outcome of an FSR to the Office of Student Conduct, I'm sorry, the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards for record keeping. So an FSR would not become a part of a student's external disciplinary record unless there's a second violation at which both time, both cases will be noted on the student disciplinary record. So for this, um, you do not want to be uh, responsible within a held responsible for violating the academic dishonesty piece um, because you can take the chance and if your faculty member desires to give you this agreement, because they don't necessarily don't have to. Um, you have this, you know, uh, FSR, and this is to help you in making sure you don't make that um, decision twice because then that can be on your disciplinary record process. Um, so just being mindful of those things. And again, if you go on the website, it'll explain exactly what academic dishonesty is. Um, things, things happen, but just being you know very mindful um, and following the instructions from your professor um, moving forward. So sexual misconduct. Um, this is also a touchy subject and it's very, very emotional. Um, in some aspects. So these are things that are happening nationwide, um, a lot higher than what we would like it to. So the biggest thing that I want you all to recognize here is we have our Office, of, uh, Office for Institutional Equity. If you scan, uh, scan the QR code, we have the big um, website regarding what sexual misconduct is, um, what we respond to. We have our confidential resources, student health, CATS that you all can go to, and non-confidential reporting options. And this isn't just regarding sexual misconduct, but if you have anything you care to share, these are the confidential resources on campus and off campus that you all can utilize. And these are the non-confidential reporting options. For our office, we would have to report, uh, legally mandated to report certain um, things revolving harassment, sexual assault, dating, domestic violence, things of that nature. So just wanna make sure you all are aware um, of what we have. And this concludes uh, my, uh, presentation regarding the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. Thank you all. Um, we have had a few questions come in that I'd love for us to be able to answer out loud. I know some of them we typed some questions, but I know for folks that are going to watch the recording, it might be helpful to ask some um, aloud. So Colin, could you just talk about keypads on doors some buildings have keypads and what folks need to do before they get here if that's the case sure um so some of our residence halls have keypads on your door so you don't use a physical key to get in you'll use your duke id um, or use your duke mobile card so you can put it directly onto your um, iphone or it also is compatible with android um, if you're arriving to campus make sure that you're presetting your pin um, which you should have got information from OIT or HRL regarding on how to set your PIN. Um, so make sure that you're doing that prior to 
coming to Durham or else you'll have to do it before you can get access to your room because we will not be giving you keys prior to you like as you move in you'll only have you know your phone or your Duke card to scan into the door so make sure you set that pin prior to coming to Durham. Awesome, thank you. Um, Aaron, how can people find out more about prohibited items, right? I know we talked about some for the residence halls, but if they're not sure about what items they can or can't bring to campus, how could students find out more about what's permitted? Oh, absolutely. So if you go to the Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards website on the new Duke website, um, under the A to Z policies, they'll also talk about prohibited items that um, students can look to see, oh, what we can't have and things of that nature. Awesome. Um, while I keep sorting through these, um, oh, I just had a question. What, let's just talk big picture. Like from your perspective, I know that was an awesome presentation with a lot of information. What is one key takeaway that you would want new to Duke students to take away from this session? Um, I think one of my biggest takeaways is to know that you're not always alone. Here, I do can be, or college in general can be very overwhelming, whether you're transferring into a new institution or this is your first time at college, um, it can be very overwhelming. So know you have so many resources, especially at Duke to get you to your end goal, whether that's an academic issue, a social issue, um, you know, anything or anything in between, um, there's a resource here for you. So ask questions, don't be afraid to reach out for help, whether that's someone like an RC like me, someone in new student family programs like Grace or someone in student conduct like Aaron, we all are, are so willing to help um, guide you in the right direction, whether that's something we can do for you personally or connect you with the right resource here on campus. To echo what Colin said, like just use us, use us, use us. Um, just because I'm not involved in housing does not mean I, I don't wanna help you um, be the best that you can possibly be. I want you all to just utilize your resources, your go to office hours, you know, talk to your FIR, talk to um, Grace, Karina, Shamiz, Ben, folks that you'll see, you know, pretty soon doing um, the orientation process. Talk to Colin, like really utilize us, you know, reach out to us. You know, there's emails um, of our offices. Feel free to email us, you know what I mean? Like just questions that you have and utilize us because we all want you all to succeed. And we want you to, I want to make sure that you personally give yourself grace. Um, when you don't do as good as you may not, as you hope to, or when things, you know, are tough or difficult and it's an adjustment, like just give yourself grace, like give yourself credit for how far you've gotten here. Like it's difficult just to get accepted into Duke and you all did that. And that's, that's a success within itself. And you're going to have more difficult moments, but you're going to also have great moments. So just making sure you utilize the people around you because we all want to see you thrive and do well in and outside the classroom. That was my motivation for the day. Um, I will remind folks, we're getting a lot of questions about, you know, can you, you tell me again how I can get these slides or repeat that info? And I'm just gonna tell everyone here, this is being recorded. It will be online. Give us about 48 hours to transcribe it and make sure it's accessible before we put it online. But you'll not only have the slides, but you'll have all the wisdom. I know this has been jam packed with lots of helpful information for y'all to think about coming to campus. Um, Calm little one, should they bring a safe? Like, how do you keep your residence hall room safe? And should there include a safe? Two different words, right. I guess. Um, so like I mentioned previously, um, make sure you always lock your door. That's so important. I know it's really easy to forget, especially if you are just running to the bathroom, running to take a shower. Um, always remember to lock your door no matter when or for how long you're leaving. Um, if you want to bring a safe, that's the, I think that's totally up to you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but that's totally a personal choice for you to make. Awesome, lots of questions coming in. 
I know we've talked about a lot of them. Um, Colin, what about guests in the residence halls generally? How do students know, like, can I have someone stay over, friend from home, whatever? What's that like? Yeah, so um, like I had mentioned in the presentation, uh, you can have a guest for three consecutive days. We don't necessarily have a limit on how many guests you can have, but keep in mind, um, you're respecting your roommate space. And even if you're in a single space, that room's only so big. Um, so just be mindful of that when you're thinking about who you would be having over and for how long. Awesome. I am gonna encourage folks, I'm gonna see if I can put it in the chat real fast, but there is also more information from Housing and Residence Life on um, our website. And so that might be a great place for you to continue to look around for more information about what's in um, your residence hall and what am amenities are provided by Housing and Residence Life. Um, I am thinking that we got through these core questions. Anything left from Colin and Aaron that you all want to address? I am so sorry that my website did not work, y'all. Like I was so hyped for y'all to see just different responses, but thank y'all for those that did respond. But definitely um, safe travels to Durham. Um, I will be around during move-in, so can't wait to see you and your family, loved ones, faces. Yeah, I would, I would definitely echo that. Safe travels to Durham. I know people are coming from all over the country and all over the world, so we're really excited to have you all here. Um, for the, the kickoff of the school year and things like that. Um, I would, you know, also echo what Grace said, check out the Student Affairs website, check out the HR website. Um, that just got a refresh. So there are a lot of good pictures and information regarding your residence hall. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to come to Durham and see a residence hall or see a few of our residence halls on accepted students days or Blue Devil days. Um, so please don't hesitate to look there um, or reach out to us directly um to get some more information but other than that we're really excited to have you all here um, and really looking forward to seeing your faces on moving day thank you so much to both colin and aaron for your time today for your preparations getting ready for our new to duke students um everyone who's watching thanks so much we appreciate it have a good one